Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with another Fire of Learning video. This time, how to tell who your ancestors were. It's cut, uh, aside from doing a shit ton of research, I feel like it's pretty hard to tell who your ancestors were. I wonder what they mean by this, like, are they talking about, like, nobility, peasantry, or, like, uh, just, like, where the fuck you're from? I don't know, let's go ahead and find out. Hello and welcome to Fire of Learning. I'm Justin. Do you share the blood of a Roman Emperor? Is Charlemagne your grandfather? Well, technically, I think if you are of European descent, you are most likely descended from Charlemagne. Is Isaac Newton your great uncle? He is. Could you even be distantly in line for a throne somewhere? If you. I think for Scotland I am. Take that, Queen of England, I'm coming for you. If you've ever wondered about your family tree, you may have wondered who all might be in it. Maybe some famous historical figures. Well, the answer may oh, be somewhat eyes. surprising. In this video, we will look at the genealogy and demographics mainly of Europe and Northern America and discuss who your ancestors may be and how you can tell. So, let's get to it. Ooh, he's got an intro this time. Before we begin, I would like to thank Tyler Teal, Guy Pithecus, Nikita Koba, Shaheen Gaiasi, Martinas Mikalauskas, UCLA Jedi Knight, and Eric for UCLA being our most Jedi recent Knight. supporters on Patreon. They join these supporters who make these videos possible. The vast majority of us can work out, at least vaguely, who our ancestors were and where they came from based on our and our biological family's physical features like hair, skin, and eye color, and where we currently live. Unless your surname was changed, it can reveal even more, much more. If your last name sounds German, then your ancestors probably were German, or at least they came from that general area. When we research these names, however, and use our family history and genealogical records to go back and find the names and stories of our ancestors, many people find they are fortunate enough to go back much farther than they realized and find some very interesting things. I have been fortunate enough to do this myself. My main paternal line is French-Canadian. French-Canadians mm. are a bit like Mormons. They're excellent genealogists. So I was given pretty well-kept records and able to take it all the way back to my distant ancestors who were among the first to colonize Acadia all the way back in the late 16th century, where I find a man with the same last name as myself, my distant grandfather, and branch out from there. Before this, going back to medieval France, the records are hazier, but eventually I come across a prominent crusader with a very similar name to me, and a claim that there was a relation to my family, although I haven't yet confirmed this. A few centuries ago, I had a French-Canadian paternal grandfather who married an Irish woman, and that line huh. took me about as far back, and it turns out it actually led to Anglo-Irish nobility, which makes the famous chemist Robert Boyle my great-uncle. My mom's side I've been less able to explore, but it's mainly English, Welsh, and Irish, with a little bit of German and French Canadian as well. I'm not sure who else might be hiding in my family tree, but enough about me. How common is it to have such people as a famous scientist or a crusader in your family tree? Actually, fairly common if you're of uh, European descent because of just... Well, you know, as time goes on, you know, descent happens and... There's more and more people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll come back to that. For the moment, though, let's consider this startling genealogical find. Almost every single president of the United States, with the exception of one or maybe two, is descended from King John of England, who lived from 1166 to 1216 A.D. I've heard of this. It was some, like, I think it was some high school girl or something, or middle school girl that decided to do this research. How she got that information to trace them all back, I have no clue, but it's Which impressive. one is the exemption? Well, believe it or not, it's not Obama. Obama is actually half white. His mother had English heritage, so he's even in there. Side fact, most African Americans have some white ancestry, which links them to this discussion as well. The exception was Martin Van Buren, Van Buren being oh. a Dutch name. It's unclear if the same was true for Donald Trump, but with his Scottish heritage, there's probably a relation as well. 
This was the discovery of a 12-year-old girl from California. Okay, an article yeah, about it was floating around a while back, and it was actually mentioned by someone in a live stream I did recently. This is at first kind of a spooky fact. It makes us wonder, are there just ruler genes being passed on? Well, maybe, but that's not what's going on here. It's not as incredible as it seems. As it turns out, nearly a third of all Americans, or a hundred million people, may be the descendants of King John. Yep. Most presidents, with the exception of a handful, had direct recent English heritage, and obviously all except Van Buren had English ancestors somewhere in their family tree from at least the Middle Ages. So this find isn't so surprising. But how is it possible? Well, let's go back to medieval Europe. The first thing to consider here is that King John lived in the 1100s. He had five legitimate children and a handful of illegitimate ones. Yep, How many illegitimate around. children is unclear. King John is vilified in history, but he was definitely a bit of a party animal. <laughs> From those five children, Woo, he party. had at least 22 grandchildren. Not all of them lived, but his illegitimate children had children as well, so he could have had 30 or so grandchildren. It becomes quite difficult to track after this outside the main line, but you could be looking at a hundred or so great grandkids, and yep. so on and so forth. The math isn't completely simple. You have to account for the fact that many children would have died, some would have joined the clergy, or never reproduced, etc., etc. But as each generation multiplies over the course of 750 or so years, eventually you end up with literally over a hundred million people being ascended from King John of England when you factor in the descendants he has walking around the rest of the world. I have English heritage on both sides of my family, so I take a wild guess and say I am one of those descendants as well. And the same may be true for you, depending on your heritage as well. Go back even further, say 300 years back to the late 800s to King Alfred the Great, who also had five children, and probably my even king. more people alive today are descended from him. In fact, the vast majority of people of European descent are likely related to Alfred and his contemporaries. It helps to understand this if you start with yourself and go backwards. You have two immediate biological ancestors, your parents, and they each have two immediate ancestors as well, yep. their parents bringing you two, four. Their parents bring you to eight, then 16, then 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, and then you have 2048 great, 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 grandparents 11 yeah. generations ago go back 25 generations or somewhere in the ballpark of 750 years ago as a generation is often defined as a 30-year period and you have mathematically what initially appears to be over 33 million such great holy grandparents. shit although this That's isn't so entirely accurate big number a few more generations and you'll have a billion ancestors listed in a time when there weren't a billion people around in europe the solution to this riddle is that you would see the same people appear in your family tree multiple times. Yes, that is kind of what it sounds like. It was quite common for third cousins, for example, to, often unknowingly, marry and have children. This isn't actually incest, because the distance between third cousins is far enough that the genes are fairly diluted. Although interestingly, the genes are close enough to where we actually might be extra attracted to them. In the right environments, we tend to be attracted to people who have some genetic similarities to us. Not so much that we're risking the problems that come from incest, but enough to where we get a little bit more of our own genes passed on to our offspring. Although I suppose I digress. However, even first cousin marriage across the planet was not unheard of until yep. only recently in the West, and it's still quite common in other areas of the world today. As people move around, they often spread their genes. Even though medieval Europe was quite isolated and marriage within those communities was, as I said, the norm, which partially explains all the first, second, and third cousin marriage, all it would take is one Frenchman descended from Charlemagne to move to Poland, and centuries later, millions of Poles are descended from Charlemagne as well. One such group, which tended to move around more than average, was the nobility. A quick glance through yep. the history of Europe's monarchies shows Austrians marrying French kings, Germans marrying English queens, and the Habsburgs marrying everyone, and especially with, themselves. Germans on the throne of Russia, Frenchmen on the throne of Spain, and so on and so forth. 
Even as houses come to and fall from power, every European monarch around today is no doubt descended from Charlemagne in some way. Secondly, let's consider this. For most of European history, the upper classes, often the nobility, consistently outbred the lower classes, up until the Industrial Revolution, where the opposite has now become true. This was of course the case in the Middle East, India, East Asia, and societies like that as well. This means that, especially in periods of famine or diseases like the Black Death in the 14th century, the nobility had higher rates of survival and successful reproduction than the lower classes did. Yeah. The wealthy typically Does had better and... access to food yeah. and water and lived outside cities. He's saying cities exactly what I was going like to say. That meaning recovery from disease and surviving famine was much more likely. You get the picture. There's a number of ways that this has been determined. One of which is the fact that noble last names have become more frequent over time. Names which were once held by, say, a royal Norman family in England, like Clare, Talbot, or any name beginning with Fitz, are now much more common in the English-speaking world. But one might think that, Regardless of this, a social barrier was in place that prevented the nobility from intermingling with the lower classes, especially in the Middle Ages, so the lines must have remained diverged. There were indeed actually rules against marriage between people of different social classes at various points in history, but keep in mind, over generations a great-grandson of a king, for example, might have a lower status of nobility. Yep. If he's the grandson of the king's youngest son out of 10 or 11 sons, then he might at this point be, in fact he would be lucky to be, lesser nobility, but really more like the middle 100%. class or some historical equivalent. Eventually, in fact quite quickly, diluted nobility married well-off individuals from the lower classes and the genes spread. So run this over the course of at least 1500 years or so and gradually you come to see people descended from this nobility becoming more and more common and the descendants of the older lower classes less and less common. Point being, yes, you are almost certainly related to at least some nobility of the area in which your ancestors lived and the likelihood of this becomes greater the more distant the individual in question is. If you're descended from Europeans, and Charlemagne, who died in the early 9th century, is almost certainly your ancestor. Ironic, as Charlemagne is often called Pater Europae, the father of Europe. Yeah, I was, I was gonna make- grand Oh, this is so funny. I was about to literally mention, like, turns out Charlemagne truly was the father of Europe. And father of Europe. <laughs> Does this mean we're all connected to each other somehow? Yeah, in a way. If that fills you with warm and fuzzy feelings of love and kinship, well, that's great. But also keep in mind, genes and genealogy are different stories. Genetics is actually quite complicated, and because you only have a set number of indivisible genes, often genes from distant ancestors can be diluted and snuffed out. Now for the real question. How exactly can you determine the people from whom you're descended? Your last name is key, and knowing just your name and your mom's maiden name, name, as I said, can get you started going far. There are numerous sources and records online. If your family has been in the area for a while, you could even check places like your local library. To keep all your findings together, there are some online websites you could use. I mean, you could write it all on paper, but computers are infinitely easier to build family trees on. These websites are not paying me to recommend them or anything like that, it's just what I've come across in my time doing genealogical research. The site I first began using is called FamilyEcho.com. It's a simple but effective website that I've used for about 8 years now. Oh, I have, damn. as That's I said, been able to go back hundreds of years and fit almost 500 people on my family tree, Jeez. collecting them all here. Another website I've found recently, which is interesting, is Genie.com. The goal of this website appears to be to build a massive family tree by allowing you to interact with others on the website and connect your tree to theirs when it detects a link between you. This that's allows some, you, cool. when your family tree is built up enough, to link yourself to other figures and see your relation to people both past and present, 
by using the information added by yourself and others to establish that link. Oh, that's pretty I've played around cool. a bit on the website, and I've actually found some links to Charlemagne and Louis IX, King of France. But keep in mind, it's important to verify the records before you get too excited, as anyone is able to add information on Genie.com. So it isn't necessarily perfectly oh, reliable. Damn. And keep in mind, the process in itself is not exactly perfect either. Adoptions can often be dead ends in genealogical research. Furthermore, no offense to you or your family, or I suppose if we go back far enough, our family, but we probably all have a couple of great, 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 etc. grandparents who had different fathers than what our family tree might say, if you understand what I mean. Yep. It may be impossible to determine exact accuracy, but in many cases, it's appreciably close enough. It may be disappointing that our medieval ancestors are less exclusive to us than we believed, unless we carry their last name or something like that. However, in another way, you could say that all of us of European descent carry the legacy of Augustus Caesar, Charlemagne, Alfred the Great, and others of this distant era, not only culturally, but genealogically as well. The same is true of the peoples of the Middle East, with figures such as the Prophet Muhammad, and the people of China with Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty. I would add furthermore that someone who lived in the 19th century may have fewer descendants walking around today than Charlemagne, who lived over a millennium before. Charlemagne is the ancestor of most Europeans, but if you're directly related to Abraham Lincoln or Napoleon Bonaparte, that's much less common, and yep. it would be much more personal. I hope you enjoyed this video. That was a pretty good video. Uh, not exactly quite what I was expecting. I I don't know what I was expecting. Uh, still pretty good though, but yeah, information that, you know, pretty self-explanatory, but hey, still a good video. Um, I especially like that note there at the end about how, hey, if you're related to Washington, well actually, Washington doesn't have any biological children, I think, so can't really be too related to Washington aside from like if you were a family member's uncle or whatever. Anyways, that was Fire of Learnings, how to tell who your ancestors were. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.